preliminary impression making in completely identical patient. Uh, the first step is uh, arranging the required things for the procedure and next is the selection of the tray. So I am showing you the selection of the tray on the identitulous model. The tray should cover all the required uh, anatomical areas and there should be an adequate space for the impression material. Then uh, you check it in the patient mode, see that uh, it is covering all the areas required to make the, an impression procedure. Then uh, select the tray. We have to select the tray maxillar and mandibular individually, that means separately. So, uh, label frenum area, then you have the incisive papilla, and the buccal, buccal frenum area, buccal freni, then the left side buccal frenum, then the distobuccal, distobuccal area, then palatal vault, the distobuccal area, and then have the maxillary tuberosity here the mandibular, label frenum, then you have the buccal frenum area here, then the other side, buccal frenum, then you have the lingual frenum here, retromolar pad, the retromolar pad, your tray should uh, cover all the required anatomical areas and there should be adequate space for the impression material. So now the tray has been selected. So we are using impression compound to make the preliminary impression for the identulous patient. So the other materials we can use for impression compound is alginate and putty consistency elastomer. We are using impression compound. The advantage with the impression compound is we can correct it, it can reuse for the same patient and it is more economical. Need the material then stretch it adapt it to the tray so you have to load the material in such a way that you have more material in the distolingual area and less material in the facial side that is uh, in relation to the labial and uh, buccal vestibular areas so in your in our examination the distolingual vestibular depth is more so you have to load more material in the distolingual area less material on the facial side that is labial vestibule and buccal vestibular areas <coughs> So to record the label frenum area, hold the lip, bring it upward, downward and inward. To record the buccal frenum area, hold the modulus area and move it upward, anterior, posterior and inward. To record the distrobuccal corner, you ask the patient to close the mouth and resist the closing pressure. That is to record the distrobuccal area in the mandibular impressions. Nalik mandu japanni, inka mandu raale. Okay, to record the lingual vestibular areas, ask the patient to perform the tongue movement. Adam pakre disuran nalik ni. Put away pain. Mundu is running. Inka Pancho. 
the tongue movements are necessary to record the lingual vestibular areas. So, protrusion of the tongue. left and right lateral movements of the tongue to record the lingual vestibular areas. And apply pressure with your fingernail in fingernail if you get an indentation in the compound the material is not set and if you don't see any indentation on the compound then the material is set. Wait for a few more seconds so that the internal material also will set. Then remove the impression from oral cavity. Impression. When you read the inter uh, read the impression and interpret the impression. Then you have the labial notch here in relation to the labial frenum. Then the lingual frenum area, there is a lingual notch. Then S-shaped, inverted S-shaped lingual flange in relation to the lingual vestibule. Then you have uh, the labial and uh, buccal flanges here. Then in the distal buccal corner. And there is slight exposure in the retromolar pad area, the trail length is not uh, adequate, it is not completely covering the retromolar pad area here. So during secondary impression making we have to take care of this. So this line will be a peripheral outline for your uh, special tray fabrication. So this marking is transferred to the diagnostic model. Then the tray is a special tray is going to be extended up to this line and special tray we are going to check it in the patient mouth and make it two millimeter short from the functional depth and width of the vestibular areas. So the excess material can be removed by using a BP knife or a Stanley knife and pass it over the flame and refine the borders. So the excess material is removed by using a BP knife. So the labial flange and the buccal flange area excess uh, has been removed by using a BP knife. Then use a blow torch or a no alcohol torch, flame it and temper the material, dip it in warm water. Then uh, once again you place it in the patient mouth and do the necessary movements to refine these borders. We use the flame to refine the borders.
it is required the buccal frenum bring it outward upward inward anterior and posterior so to refine the labial frenum again fold the lip move it upward thickness of border is reduced like this you can cut the excess material all around use the blow torch anu alcohol torch soften the material and refine the borders once again you do the necessary movements in the patient mouth so see that all the anatomical areas required anatomical areas are recorded in your uh, impression then this impression is disinfected and model is poured with a dental plaster Okay, this is poured with the dental plaster, and you may get a, a cast diagnostic model uh, like this. So this model showing the peripheral outline for your tray extension, and it is made two millimeter short in the patient mouth, and it is checked, and it has been verified in the patient mouth before doing border molding and final impression making.